Anomaly. Something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or expected. An oddity. Peculiarity. Irregularity. Inconsistency. Incongruity. A rarity. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Anomaly Podcast. I'm Jen. Angela and I, Rico, Noah, Sith Jen and her sister all made it home yesterday evening after an exciting three-day weekend at Wizard World Austin Comic Con. So much fun happened and we can't wait to share it all with you so you're getting a bunch of episodes all at once. You're welcome. We recorded reports each day at our booth along with a few mini skirt topics like what real-life superpowers do you have? And a Star Trek Discovery fall finale discussion. All three of the reports are available now in our feed. So once you finish this one, move on to the next. The following is our report for day one. The Star Trek Discovery fall finale chat will be uploaded tomorrow, and a Felicia Day panel will be added next week. We also have a video coming soon that will feature photos and video of all the experiences we talked about in these reports, as well as commentary from me and Angela describing all that you're watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Vimeo channel, or to our website so you know when it's ready to watch. All right, we're recording and it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. It is a little hot. <laughs> You know, you guys, I'm from the north. It doesn't feel hot to me. It feels nice. But you guys, you're used to, like, massive air conditioning down here. That, Somebody that needs to be part subarctic, of you know. Texas needs to be informed popsicles. that it's mid-November and 80s should not be a thing anymore. It's fine for retro if you're making a TV show, but it's a temperature. Uh, it's right out. Yeah, it's right <laughs> out. I agree with that completely. Well, all right. So here we are. We are at Comic-Con. I'm trying to get my phone. Comic-Con 2018. 2000, Wizard World, <laughs> Austin. Austin. I'm joking, it's Wizard 2017. World, Wizard yes. World, Austin, Comic-Con 2017. I'm this is the energetic podcast here. where we just set up and we all have a lot of energy still. Oh, this is before everything gets yeah. very yeah. dark. Yeah, yeah this is very the show dark. where it's like, ah, uh, yeah. Jump cut to the Sunday afternoon podcast and where we're just it like, eventually uh, becomes we're like, here. <laughs> It's well, Sunday. the last time Man, I'm so tired, <laughs> my feet can't walk another step. <laughs> the last time we were here, it was when, when I there can't was, smile for one more. It was picture. two years ago when it was that torrential rainfall, and so our very first podcast right. was very. Oh, <laughs> we made it. Too good. We're inside. It's dry. Uh, yeah, I like that one a lot though because Angela had the crazy hair. You know, <laughs> she had like the hair like that was like, like. I did. It was. It was, it was like crazy. Whoosh. It was way out. It was definitely Wonder Woman hair. You wow. know, like oh, she, yeah. she was just constantly twirling. I was. With her, uh, Wonder and Woman. I was just jealous because any sort of good hair, hair just comments <laughs> <laughs> turns me into a green rage monster. I like it. <laughs> Noah Hulk's out. Well, we <laughs> saw we saw Felicia Day walk by with her baby. Felicia we Day's did. here with her baby. We just saw Nichelle Nichols just, walk by. Yeah. Or, I guess we're in a wheel good by. spot. Wheel by. Yeah. We are in a pretty good spot. By. And then we have... Uh, G.I. Joe protecting us across the way over there. We yeah. do. Yeah. They yeah. look awesome. I almost I snagged a picture with Jason Mewes before he got to his Ooh, booth. So <laughs> close. I was just like, hey, can I grab a picture with you? He was like, yes, if you come to my booth right over here. It's just that's like, well, that's fair. That's, <laughs> that's why you're here. I that's guess I true. can't really. Okay, I'm going to pass the, cam- the, the video so that we can get right. other angles All right. of Good. this thing All right. we're doing. So, so we're anyway. what are we here? looking forward to? Well, Jason Momoa no, is supposed to be rain, here. So. Oh, that, and we're looking forward to it cooling down. Yeah. <laughs> is, no. it, is it or is it going to be warm bold time? No, today was the warmest day. Oh, okay. So oh, it'll be, good. it's not going to be cold, but it'll be cooler. Um, we're looking forward to Star Wars. We're doing Star Wars Day tomorrow for us. So yeah, it's cosplay. not really Star Wars Day, but it's going to be our Star Wars Day. Yes. So that'll be fun. And when, I'm... When Delta brings my bag. Oh, yes. Tell <laughs> the story, Rico. Well, it's not too much. My bag went to... I, I came from Detroit to, to directly to Austin, and my bag decided to go to Atlanta first and yeah. uh, take the long way here and should be arriving shortly, hopefully. And then we'll be delivered to the hotel, and hopefully everything's still in it because the story goes it was didn't make it to the plane. I made it to the plane, but the bag did somehow. Yeah. So 
Yeah. So today's Muggle Day, as you guys call it. Uh -huh. Yeah. The con mm -hmm. just opened about what 30, 40 minutes ago. Yeah. Yep. It hasn't been and open so long. there's 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 a good amount of foot traffic here. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing a Felicia Day panel. I don't know if they're doing that or not. We I are. Check the schedule. Yes. Schedule. I have the schedule. Yes. Of course. Good. And um, one of Angela's schedules right there. Is she doing yeah. a solo talk? Some, she is, is doing she? a ballroom A big talk. Called Queen of the Nerds. Oh, very yes, nice. We She's going to go. be in the new season of The Magicians, I think I read. The Librarian? I don't know if, no, or The Magicians. Magicians. Okay. I don't know if anybody, uh, any of you watched that. I've watched it. I've it, heard that it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. They call it like uh, Harry Potter for grown ups, or it's like older people doing magic, let's call it. So, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Pass the phone. So she'll probably be talking and about that, and I think she's got a book out, a new book. Maybe? Oh yes, I think that's the name think of the book it, is Queen of the Nerds or something like that. I saw it on her table over there. Oh cool. Yeah. Well, and Michelle Nichols, I know I didn't see that she was doing a panel, but that doesn't necessarily mean any explain. You know, I, I haven't seen a lot of the celebrity panels like when they're going to be. So hopefully there'll be one for everybody. Yeah. Are you going to go see Jason Momoa? I didn't see a panel for him. Oh. So I don't know. Well, you're a Stargate fan, and I know that they have a. I am panel a Stargate with Atlantis fan, and Flanagan. I and I they do, and I may go to that. But they also have um, Charisma Carpenter and Emma Caulfield are here from Buffy. I want to see them, and then I will probably go see Holly Marie Combs again because I love her from Charmed. Yeah, she's probably my favorite one, and well, I don't know. I like Shannon Doherty too. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to pick because I love those ladies. Who's the guy from Napoleon Dynamite? He's here. Uh, John. John Heater. John Heater. Heater. He's Heater. doing. Heater. 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 He's doing. Hello. Hi. I'm explaining podcasts. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Cool. Um, so we're actively at the booth. That's the thing. Is the yeah. the yeah. the ambient noise you hear is the booth, the booth the noise, con the around con us. happening around us. And we have this really cool placement actually right next to Artist Alley. There's a lot of cool things to look at right here. We got GI Joe right across. Right from us. across. Protecting. The five oh first is down. The yeah, the lane a little bit. Yep. The aisle. Yep. Hello, hello. Hi. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have a shield too. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have to get the. Angela is demonstrating her Wonder Woman shield Rinfest. Rinfest this is my shield. Wonder Wench outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my. And I even have a. This. <laughs> People get it. Cool. Well, well good, it's luck. good to see y'all again. We'll see you around. Yeah, come back and All see right. us tomorrow. So that happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one thing. Um, but I do like the setup because it makes us look really legit. <laughs> we are legit. What are you talking about? I didn't say we weren't. I'm just saying that the podcast. You can be legit and not look legit. You that's just can't right. quit, right? Exactly. Uh, we are. You are too legit to quit. <laughs> too legit. Too oh. legit to quit. Hey, hey. <laughs> I almost forgot these. <laughs> that's Very not the strange. first time that's happened. Oh, geez. Though. Here we go. Live thing. My bag is a lot is arriving now on claim style, turnstile, whatever it's called. Number seven. Yeah, go pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> go get. Go okay, get it. Okay, <laughs> Delta. Now let's see how you if you handle getting my bag now from the airport to the hotel. So. I would have picked it up from the airport myself if it were there for me, but no, we uh, can't have yeah, nice exactly. things. No. If it would have been there six hours ago, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to end the video. Okay. So Can we keep talking? Yeah, we can keep talking. Let's have just a nerd conversation. All right, let's nerd it. I know we've had this conversation before, but let's do this anyway. Um, since I'm the only non-muggle here right now, let's talk about superheroes. I want to hear detailed information about your superpowers and okay. why. Okay, okay. Noah, why don't you go first? All right. Well, having lived the life I have, I've given this infinite amount of thought over the years. And as one grows older, you know, you <laughs> vary what sort of superpowers you would want. Yeah. You know, when you're a kid, you want to fly and have the super strength and all that. Uh, you know, at a certain point, I was just like, oh, I want to, the, the healing factor so I can be immortal, like Wolverine, things like that. Yeah. But being the person I am now, teleportation. Oh. I think would be my first and foremost. I don't need to fly. That's kind of fancy. I just want to be able to get from point A to point B 
instantaneously. Practical. Apparition. If I could apparate, that's the only wizard spell I would need. That's great. I like that. Because that's fair. Because transportation is uh, like... A lot of the stress in life, I think, could be relieved if transportation weren't such a issue. Big issue. I understand that. All right, Jen. Go to someone else. I have to think about it. Because <laughs> okay, I, I have, like, two or three I want. So, th so this is this is power as we would like? So do we get, have? like, an offensive and a defensive? Oh, I like that. Offensive and defensive. Okay, I think that one would have to be a defensive. Right? Kind of. It's neutral. -ish. It is neutral. Yeah. It's not yeah, a dark side or a light around. side power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You right. watched that Gifted show yet? That's a good show. I, there's so porter, much good TV nowadays. It's like, yeah. how do I even get through? How like, do you start? How do you even start? Yeah. Okay, I'll have to come back to my offensive power because okay. that's a whole other... Rico, do you know? Uh, I could come up with something on the fly. I'm pretty good at, at uh, things on the fly. That'll be one of my superpowers. <laughs> that, 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 that's one of my real Ooh. superpowers. Yeah, I have, because I have of a couple of my real job ones. And You're other, off mic a little bit. Am I off mic? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You can um, move it. You're good. You don't have to like, get that close. I the, want a uh, hat that I can pull anything out of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the, uh, so yeah, that would be one of my uh, being able to like improvise is one of my normal superpowers. My that's what I actually can do. But I like the Wolverine healing ability because of the age thing, and also just I don't like being sick. I hate being sick. Yeah. I cannot stand it. Not <laughs> knock on wood. Most of the time, I don't get sick very often. But super healing. But I, yeah. I would like to be able to. And I think also adding to that, I'll just say it would be nice to be able to do that for people that I know, like friends. Oh, family. I like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, some kind of healing thing would be would be good. The healer. Yeah, I'm That's good true. with that. Angela? Angela? I'm boring because I just like telekinesis. I was just going to go for telekinesis. I mean, I'm, yeah. it's I'm such pretty, a useful thing. It's, it's useful and, yeah, it's a good tank power, I think. Moving <laughs> things with your mind. Yeah, yeah. being able to yeah. move things with your mind, I think, is a, would be a good tank power. It's like 11. Or stop things with your mind that are yeah. coming at you. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Like 11. Yeah. yeah. And so telekinesis would probably be at the top. And I've, I've never really gone off that like I've always had and I do like because I love my charmed powers she also has Prue has astral projection which I think is interesting so, so I guess seeing telekinesis, another place is that, no, is that you what actually, that means like, or, or you have an you, astral self that you can project somewhere else but it allows you to see that other place though right, too, right? but you yeah. can also interact with it so you're not like a like hologram Doctor like Doctor Strange yeah, yeah like yeah. Doctor Strange so, okay. so it's that kind of thing which I think is a good Two, yeah. yeah, those are two good powers mm -hmm. that I think would work for me. And and it's an off I would say that that's a, a new astral projection. Telekinesis is yeah, for is, sure. Yeah, telekinesis is definitely like an offensive power. And astral projection is more of like a neutral. It's kind of like the, the teleportation, but it'd be good for um, stealthing and for um, information gathering and that oh, kind yeah. of thing. So, and it would. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So that th those would definitely be mine. What about you, Jen? Okay. I I have always gone with super intelligence. Okay. I want to be like a brainiac, but I also want mind control, like for my defensive. So I wouldn't have to lay Is a mind finger. control a defensive? Well, yeah. If someone's attacking me, I could make them stop without even huh. lifting my finger. I don't if know. I could make them turn on their yeah. friends. I could make them. Yeah. Uh, I think that's open an offensive computers. power. Computers. And yeah. it's dark side. It's, it's <laughs> offensive and defensive. And dark yeah, side. A lot it's, of, yeah. it's a dark side power. Let's yeah. just put that out there. <laughs> I, you asked, okay? Telekinesis could also be a no. dark side power. No. Yes. All of the Jedi have have telekinetic abilities. It's not a dark side power. Are you rejecting my superpower I choices? <laughs> I just think are, of you. Are you power shaming? I think of you as power a light shaming. side person, and so it's it is surprising I to would, me. I that you promise would pick to use my powers for good. That, for good. <laughs> that is what good. they like, all only, say, right? Only in, only in yeah, all the pursuit of the light side. Yeah. Yes. Absolute power. Corrupts. I would make people yeah. do good things for the greater good. Only for the greater good. <laughs> I hey, guess. But maybe I'm gray. Maybe I go bad sometimes. Maybe, maybe you go, go both good. ways. Yeah. It's funny they have somebody on uh, that gifted show that with that your what you're talking about mind kind of controlling bending too. Just yeah. like you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. And See, most like, of the time Obi Wan has good. mind control. He could do yeah. the Jedi mind trick. Okay, These that's are not the droids you're looking for. See there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, I'm, I mean it's just a conversation. 
And so it wouldn't be a conversation if I didn't have something to say about it, Jen. <laughs> I just realized when I used to play paper D&D a lot that I used to be the healer of the group a lot. Interesting. That was my, I was well, I was either a magic user guy or a healer, what one was or the other. your raid group? Remember when we did oh, the dynamics yeah, of when raid we did groups? That. What, let's revisit that. Rico, I think he said back then that he would be ranger. But you think you're a healer? I might be a healer. I, I was more, well, I've, I've done both. I've done both, either either range type things, either with a ranger type character or or a magic user type, but healer a lot too. Usually a lot of the support. That was probably the primary one I did most of the time, yeah. Yeah. Healer. I'm the guy that brings, you know, extra water to the, you're going somewhere, <laughs> or brings them We're going like, on a hike. snacks. And, Does everybody want Yeah, is everybody happy? <laughs> Everyone okay? <laughs> Have a cookie. That was like the mom, that was the mom <laughs> voice. Have a biscuit. Everybody Have a little a biscuit. cookie. Have some more root beer. <laughs> Your blood sugar might be a little low. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so, cute. Uh, what about you, Noah? Well, in in like if I'm actually playing D and D, I go between a ninja type character or uh, just a brute barbarian kind of character depending on how much, how much brain activity I want to have in the game mm -hmm. like there's a lot because there's a lot more uh, uh, mental activity that goes on if you're trying to be like sneaky and yeah. do mischievous things and things like that and if you're just big brute I smash you now you it's can just lay back and wait for the action to happen yeah. and you know somebody points you in a direction to go smash mm -hmm. so uh, but in the the real life dynamic of a raid group I am I am a rogue yeah I am uh, <laughs> uh, one of my friends uh, has a saying she says I am fast but not sneaky <laughs> Noah is sneaky but not fast <laughs> and I am not fast I'm not a fast person but I am sneaky I can be very quiet when I need to be and yeah so yeah. that is that is my internal raid group dynamic. I uh, people people will start uh, like saying, "Well, we need to get this done this way. We need to get this done this way." I go off on the side and I just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I tend to do that sometimes too. She does. <laughs> like when we were playing uh, Old Republic, I signed up and created a like a sentinel or some sort of Jedi like that. But yeah. then, like I would wait for no one, <laughs> doing all my things, sneaking up on people. Doing her mind do control. Like and Angela's like, hello, <laughs> there is a plan. The tank. What are you doing? <laughs> I am supposed to draw the aggro. And I'm like, Leroy Jenkins. Uh, squishy. Yes. My squishy was in danger. Yes. <laughs> but Just no, I think alone. we decided I was kind of half and half Ranger Rogue. Yeah, I think you are half and half Ranger Rogue. I agree with that. I sometimes like to play DPS on when I'm playing games. I enjoy being just like totally overpowered on some sort of DPS situation, magic user, or, you know, grenades, cannons, whatever is available that I can lodge at people. I would love to do that. But I definitely like playing tank and I like being a tank and I, I'm good at it. I'm good at protecting my people, being mama bear. I mean, it's not the take care of you, mama bear. It's the not my daughter. Not you. my daughter. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's more. That's more me. As I'm seeing some uh, some Jedi and oh, Is that Ray. A Captain Jack? Rico's taking some video. Yes, a Captain Jack. There's always one of those. I've got my back to everything, so. Oh, oh sorry, Noah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we had to have. I will like, walk a round around and table. see all these people and take oh, pictures. Oh yeah. So that'll be well for a little walk around in a while. Oh yeah. 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 I think we talked about this a little bit at lunchtime, but if you were going to do a spinoff. Okay. Of any television show, sci-fi or fantasy, what tertiary character would you want to base that spinoff on? Shepard Book. Ah, Firefly. That's a good That's one. That's a good one. That is a good one. Because of all the characters in Firefly, I feel like we got the least amount of information about him. Agreed. We just got the teases of what could be, yeah. but we never got any real payoff on any of that. Now, Ron Glass obviously has departed this realm, mm -hmm. but I still think that that character... That uh, would be cool. ...would be an interesting one to dive into. Yeah, I, like I agree. I like Plus, that. anything more in the Firefly universe... Yeah. ...will be greatly accepted by the masses, I would That's assume. That's true. You know, when I thought of this question, I actually had a really good idea for one, and now it's gone. What? And so I'm going to have to think about it throughout Gone, and hopefully it'll come back, but... I can't remember right now. Do you what remember it was. what it, if it was Star Trek? It was Trek? good. 
It wasn't was Star it? Trek. It wasn't Star Trek. Was I don't Star think. Trek, Star Wars? Uh, not Star Wars or Star Trek. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But, Ooh. yeah, stinks. I can't remember. What about you? <laughs> the oh. new quest of the con, finding Jen's brainwave. I yes. know. Wow, Jen. That... It was like one of those ideas I had as I was trying to go to sleep. Uh, and it's one of those things I should have written down yeah. when I thought of it. And I went to sleep and poof, it was gone. I remembered the question, but not my awesome idea. <laughs> not your awesome idea. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure. I think... Anything from Charmed? Not really, because, I mean, the sisters are the main thing, and I pretty much... I like them. They like, were all I don't pretty really, in there. They didn't, yeah, yeah, they didn't really, like, leave anybody out. I mean, yeah. it would have been interesting to see more about the... Like the grandmother and the mother, like before, like previous, the previous Hallowells or whatever, they have option charmed for like a new series. So we'll, I don't know if it's going to be like a continuation or just a reboot or what they're going to do. I was thinking actually more, and we may even get this, is my favorite new character on Discovery is the engineer. Stamets. Stamets. They're probably going to dive more into him anyway, but. I really like his character, and I would like to see, you know, what he was doing before he got to Discovery, or yeah, that, would um, be interesting. that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I don't know, I really like his character, and I just want to see stories about Tilly like forever. Yes, like, she's <laughs> awesome, and I just want to like uh, if we could Captain just, Tilly, if we can follow her like from now until she's you know 80 <laughs> that would be great <laughs> yeah. I, I agree that's true i would you love know, to see her whole story so can we talk about like this one little scene that may not be too plot revealing at all that wouldn't ruin it for noah sure you, and that's that okay scene, i'm very good at forgetting plot points oh me too that scene where stamets had the issue in the tank and then and he, felt, he called her captain, captain. I still think he's seeing some of the future. Oh, I know he's seeing the future. And I think at some point, I mean, because that's what she wants is a command. So. Yeah, that was one of the first. Uh, that was one of the first things she said, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. To uh, to burn him when they met, right? But, yeah. Like, I'm going to be captain, or I want to be captain, right? Right. Yeah. Well, so. and that's the thing is that yeah, that's her whole point of you know she wants a command track, which is great, and she's cool, and I want to see. And it's neat because we always see captains, you know, when they've already done their thing. So it'd be neat to see someone right from the bottom, yeah, grow into, grow a, into a captainship. That would be very cool. But but also, and this again is not too plot revealing. I have this theory about the Stamets. What's the word I'm looking for? Plot wise, not like he's related, but I feel like plot wise, he's turning into kind of a Guinan character. This kind of like somebody that exists outside of time and space, like. Guinan kind of does. All knowing. He knows things that no one else knows. Mysterious. Yeah. Hi. (laughs) Hello, hello. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I think that um, as far as the story is concerned, I like the idea of having someone on the crew who has that little bit of extra knowledge. Yeah. It's cool, though, man. The last episode was awesome. They would be talking lot, about this in more detail if it weren't for the fact that well, I haven't we'll seen have to, any we'll of have it. We'll have to revisit this topic again during <laughs> yeah. con and, and talk about that yeah. finale. It we was do. good. It was it good. It was really good. What yeah. about the... Or the season, mid-season finale. I'm going to ask you guys, we talked a little bit about this at lunch. No one missed it. But now that you're here, you, I'm <laughs> sure you have an opinion on this. Christopher Tolkien just pretty Ooh, much yeah. retired and has... and and. and I think since there's grandchildren and um, he has other siblings that also are on the board for, you know, that are protecting their father's legacy. legacy. Right. Mm-hmm. But they have signed away some of the, I don't know if they're working with some other companies. I, what is it? Warner Brothers or somebody else? I heard Amazon, Amazon. is going to be making a new series. Right. Yeah. Is this, yeah, I think so. I have mixed feelings yeah. about this because I think as a fan of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. I I love the books and I loved what Peter Jackson did mm-hmm. and I'm slightly trepidatious about what another person would come along and do, whether they would add to the richness or diminish it by making it like a CW thing. <laughs> you oh, know, good like baby. a sort of truth kind well, of thing. I think I think what is I think the good part about that is there is the chance that it will be awesome. Mm-hmm. There's a chance that it will be 
the next great thing in the history of Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. that we can add to the Pantheon. Right. There is a chance that it can be, you know, a, a step down where I, you know, I've got the, the original Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies and for me, the Hobbit movies are not as good. Right. Uh, so they're still good, not as good. If it falls into that category, okay. But if it falls any lower than that, then you get the backlash. And there's even good in that because if it's not good, people will realize you can't just take a hot property and not make something good with it. Yeah. Just because you have a property that is epic, if you don't treat it well, if you don't do if you don't do, do it, it right, justice. if yeah. you don't do it justice, then the people will not take you. They yeah. will not they will not buy what you're selling. And so they the, will hate a, you. The attempt after <laughs> yeah. that, whoever tries it again will be will be like, okay, the bar bar was set really high in the early two thousands mm-hmm. and you know, it's been 20x years since then and that other show well we know what happened to them so we have to do it right so yeah. I try to see the good and the bad and things like that and not get too excited but also not get too yeah uh, I, I honestly think for me that that what you were saying is that what they might do is not like a reboot but like use stories from the stories from Middle Earth type of deal where you don't necessarily, you know, a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead type of deal where you have um, tertiary, like you said, tertiary characters or characters that maybe you just heard mentioned or, the, you know, maybe something about the, something in the Prancing Pony or one of the guys in the Prancing Pony or something about another hobbit or something about uh, ancestors of ancestors from, or even talking about the Silmarillion even some of the lore, like the mm-hmm. the beginning of the world and all of the things that happened when um, uh, the Valinor, you know, the Valinor or whatever. What am I thinking of? Y'all know what the, I'm talking and about. The Viar and the Viar. Yes, and talking about some of the, 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 the base stories that he kind of, you know, the richness of that world and, right. and talking about it in general, I think that would be really kick-ass. Do you think, though, that the, the public, though, will want to just see Gandalf and Bilbo and all the normal, you know. It depends. I think. I also don't think we should. I mean, because I wouldn't have thought that people would be as into Game of Thrones as they were, and and that's a that's Those a. Those books are pretty popular. Yeah, though. but they have a but wide-reaching audience beyond geekdom. They do, but yeah. I wouldn't have thought that like they would. Like my mom is watching it, and she's not a geek. <laughs> no, but but before the I, show, I, right? I mean, the books, the books, but, but yeah, the yeah, books the book, were being the read. The books were being read, like, way before. Sorry, we are at the back of the con, and people are coming, like, celebrities are coming in. Oh, my gosh, seriously, who is that? But I can't who figure out who it is. Who was But I could tell, this? no. It looked like it was Michael Roker. Roker yeah, whatever. I, think I think it was it Michael was. Roker. And, yeah. so, and so we're seeing celebrities we're good, come in. Good but, but we're seeing, Let's the, you know. Let's just put the camera back here. Yeah, we'll just, like, yeah, we just need to put a camera and, like, have it. I, I, you're right. I've I seen more is, celebrities. I think this is the entrance. This area. is the back entrance, yeah. and so, which is not great for us in a way, but it's kind of neat. <laughs> that yeah. means we can uh, we can be like, hey, before you leave, come yeah. by, say, talk into this microphone for a couple seconds. Yeah. Exactly. I wish. Like the Bruce Campbell incident. Of <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, as remind known. people because some may yeah. not have seen that video. I missed it. I was getting uh, I was getting uh, an autograph with Casey. We. Uh, we were hanging out with Jim, and we were taking pictures with a yeah. two guys the, that were cosplaying guys, yeah. Back to the Future, and they were like, you know, doing their, you know, standing there doing their poses, and we took a couple of pictures, and then all of a sudden Bruce Campbell came by, and totally photo bombed the picture. A couple, and of he times. was like, yeah, he's he's, like he, I took like three or four pictures of him, and he's like, here, this is how you do it. This is how you do it, and he did like his little bit, <laughs> and he. And he even uh, flipped off the camera. Yeah, he <laughs> gave us the bird, which is perfect. It's, that's that's Bruce. That's in, that's think, on brand. That's on. Brand. I yeah. think that's on brand. I agree with that. Like I would have been kind of disappointed if he had done that. And it, and the best hey, part too Campbell. is that the first picture, the guys don't don't know, and, and so they're him. just yeah. doing you know like they're they think he's just a the, guy. Well, yeah, yeah, or they're just still posing. And then the picture that I took where they all realized. That it was him. They're like, huh? And, then, <laughs> and it's so they've completely broken character, and it's hilarious. Anyway, so that was, and it's funny because like a year before, we had paid to get a picture 
<laughs> you know, with, with Bruce Campbell. So I was like, damn it. It's a picture that Angela would make out with. I think it was your comment about that, right? I would have made out with that picture. It yeah. was, cause it was the it was best. was a picture of Picard. No. No. No, no, no. no. I respect that picture too much. Okay. <laughs> that picture is a really good friend that I respect and admire. I want to respect that picture in the morning. So. <laughs> yes. I respect that picture. I want that picture to respect me in the morning. Also, he smiled in that picture. He did. He did. I don't know if anyone's really familiar with um, Patrick Stewart in like uh, pictures with fans, but he always looks uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> but Patrick Angela Stewart was. Does? He or does. William Shatner. Patrick Stewart. Really? He looks uncomfortable in a lot of Shatner pictures. Shatner will mug for you. I don't know. I thought yeah. he was smiled pretty good with Angela. Exactly. Well, exactly. Remember what she was wearing. <laughs> I was wearing she my was Wonder her, Woman out, yeah, and he was very happy about that. Yeah, he looked really happy. You think really he happy. doesn't look happy with most of the pictures you've I seen? I have looked at a lot of I'll pictures I'll just say online. he probably would look happier standing next to Angela than next to me. His face well, was well, and also there. because in the next picture, because we got two pictures, and Jim joined us, and in the picture with just me, he's smiling, and in the picture with Jim, it's kind of he's like, like ah. mm. <laughs> the smile went down See, a few that's the notches. Thing. And, His uh, face on a lot of uh, you know pictures with fans look that I've sad. Seen. No, no, no. The other pictures that I've seen of him, many of them, mm-hmm. it looks like he's putting on a smile for the picture, and it's like a half smile. Like this is uncomfortable, but I'm doing it. You paid me. <laughs> it's the Austin uh, cool. Silent Bob cosplayer. Guy. It is. He changed it up to he this did. time. He did. He yep. did. Yeah. The Kevin Smith. The fat man on Batman jersey instead of the trench coat. Every year since 2012. We've so I was gonna. Yeah. What I I wanted to say about the this Lord of the Rings oh, or, or Tolkien whatever they're calling oh, yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Yep. The one. Th- did you guys see? Did you guys see Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Yes, did you see I did. that movie? So mm-hmm. I think that's a good comparison or analogy, and that was right? Good, right? Because I, I liked seen it. it yet. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but so you got all the Harry Potter movies and books, and then they did that, and I still think it was pretty popular and did pretty well, but that. If they do that with Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. still do it well. Because it's a nod. But, yeah. you know, you're... I wouldn't want to just see them do, like, okay, we're... Here's the ring, Bill. You know, here's the ring, Frodo. You got to go and off with Sam. Right. And yeah, if I, they tried to just I, if rehash... If they just do that... Yeah. I mean, even when they've redone Star Trek, for the most part, it's not... Except for the movies, it, here isn't Kirk, Spock, and McCoy again. They just have recently done that 50 years later. Yeah. But... You know, the new Star Trek's totally new characters, the other series, TNG and all that, all new characters. So I just think they have to be careful. I just don't want them to just be like, okay, here's Lord of the Rings again, but on Amazon. Oh, like like right. rebooting um, Star Wars, uh, Superman over and, oh, oh, and Batman Spider-Man. over and Spider-Man over. Spider-Man New director. Until you get to new the good director. one, yeah. then yeah, you're happy. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But then they might redo it. Again. Well, but remember though, that was bef- the Batman that we're talking that y'all are talking about is before superhero movies were even really a thing. Like you, you of course you had Superman and then Batman, but it wasn't as pro like there wasn't as prolific of like oh we're just going to keep going with this whole universe thing. Yeah. And so I think that it's hard to judge those properties by today's standards. It's just hard that they just did. But kind I like of Michael Keaton. Lord of the Rings and then the <laughs> Hobbit movie, so it seems so fresh. Yeah. Recent. And then well, to say, yeah. See, I think it was Michael Rooker that came by. Yep, I'm pretty yeah. sure that was him. Somebody's they, just they like, just announced announce him. me. I'm here. <laughs> announce, I'm in the building. Be announced now. <laughs> yeah, but I, I get what you're saying, Angela. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tricky thing. It's uh-huh. just, and I know there's, these are popular, so they immediately are going to get people to watch, but there's a lot of other good fantasy out there. Yeah. And it yeah. invites comparison. Like, if you where's do the Dragon right. Riders of Pern, you know, that oh. I've wanted for well, the Wheel of Time 30, 40 been years. <laughs> In green, development hell. Greenlighted, yeah. though. This time they took it away from whoever has owned it forever. I think that's oh, going to fall into that category, though, that seems like there's so many legal issues that are yeah. happening. Yeah, it just gets but is stuck. It, is it but I think it came finally? out. Didn't that guy was sitting on it. Oh, it was and horrible right. with Billy Zane. They made some really bad Well, someone took it away from them. So I yeah. think they they now have, it's going to be a television series because it's so freaking long. Oh yeah, there's oh, no man. way you can yeah. do movies yeah. out of that. There's ten seasons of material. I don't know, books. I haven't heard anything. I've, every once in a while I look at the one, what is it, not the One Ring, it's the equivalent to that for Wheel of Time. The, wiki the One for, Wheel? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. So I checked that to make sure, you know, I haven't missed some news, but you know, it's the same. Someone's acquired it, who knows what they're doing, and that's all we know. So. Right. 
anyway. So, yeah, as far as Lord of the, Lord of the Rings goes, I've heard that what they're planning to do is kind of like fan fiction. Yeah, stories from. Stories from, not centered on any of the characters we know, but like outside characters in the world. We'll have to see. Yeah. If we hate it, we can we can raise a stink. Not yeah. watch. I mean, they should take a few notes from the Star Wars prequels and the <laughs> outrage that we, many, many fans had over that kind of... And that was George Lucas's doing. So, and, mm. yeah. yeah. We will show you our displeasure if you do something we don't think is good. Do not displease I've always have a hard time with the prequels of remembering... Were people, uh, like, really bothered by them... It seems like most of the bother came, like, after, later, much, you know, not, like, right when the movies came out. Like, people kind of said, what do you guys remember? I mean, I was it? No, I... There was a little bit of that, but it seems like as time has gone on, everybody says, you know, oh, the original trilogy was so, you know, it seems like it's grown. I guess I agree, is what I'm saying. But I think that also a little bit. I think you're right. I just rem- no, to a degree. I oh, think yeah. to a good degree, but I you know, I can only speak for myself. And I remember the moment when they started talking about Midichlorians and I was like, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Angela's going to the manager of the theater. I want my money back. What is Call go- George Lucas what on the, the phone. absolute is ha- what is happening? Huh. Midichlorians, what? And that was only like 45 minutes <laughs> in. I know. So, so episode, the first one, you were already already having trouble. Okay. I, yeah, I remember. But I love Star Wars, and I just kept, I was, I, you know. I See, did. that's that's what I recall, as I remember going to the first one, leaving the theater being like, huh. That wasn't what I expected. Right. Let's yeah. see what happens in the next one. Right. Well, yeah. that's kind of leaving how I episode felt. two yeah. going. I wasn't really okay, hard that was on it. Not. I don't think was that not good. Was right. That, was like that you, a not good Star you, Wars film? Yeah, we it's were in because, denial. Maybe it'll tie all together in episode three, there's and then leaving like episode two, three going. Although there's things that are hmm. not I, good, but of all of them, episode three was the least least yeah. offensive. Least. Yeah, offensive. They, that was a solid. Offensive. Okay. It's a solid. O- yeah. <laughs> that didn't a, sound right, did it? C it's solid. Minus. It's okay. It's not so. What is it? F plus. <laughs> yeah. You got a solid C there, an, an George, F. on the third one. You got to yourself a solid C average. Well, and then, you know, Jim had been. Jim read the book, and then he was like, the story's good, Angela. And I'm like, I know. It's just not mm. translated very, very well. It didn't well. translate very well. So. I've always felt that they, they missed a lot with starting the way they did. I, I felt like that the first movie shouldn't have really happened. They should have started with about two, three, and then shown a little of Vader. Yeah. That's oh, what yeah. I've, I've always felt like. Like in the Rebels. They really yeah. missed. Mm-hmm. I know we wanted to show that this was a little kid that just kind of got Yeah, that was the hook. But I've always felt they missed an opportunity. And maybe they'll go back and do that now with all these other movies. With Maybe yeah. we'll get a Vader movie where it'll be like, okay, Vader in his prime hunting Jedi down or whatever. But yeah. I, I always felt like they missed that. I mean, they just stop. Like, okay, he's Vader. Oh, end yeah. the movie. No, no. <laughs> uh, that was the most disappointing thing to me. Yeah, Frank, and, Frank and Vader. Yeah, mm. so it was well, too obvious. Everything was a little too on like the nose. Oh, heavy-handed. Mm-hmm. Angela and I have already covered these movies, and we yeah. always talk about the good and the bad. So there's a lot of about the movies that we we enjoyed. So it's not just that we. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I said that when Noah was talking. I like a lot of even Attack of the Clones. I liked some stuff in there. Yeah, the the big fight with all the Jedi. Oh yeah, the lightsaber the battle. They've never really done that. Part's that. great. In a, in it a, is. You know, that that's probably that's the biggest the only time we've seen Jedi that. bad guy fight they've done. Right, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, but you know, you have to wait an hour and forty minutes to yeah. get there. And you do that and whole bit where they're running through the workshop and oh my god and little, George, little, George, little, yeah, that was during reshoots George like, had him in just a big green room and said just dodge around we'll make it look fine and it just uh, looks horrible yeah it just doesn't make any sense it's and then there's motivation. but to, Je- to Jen's point we have covered this but I also sure like, I know I, I just yeah, yeah you know speaking of prequels though I you know going back to the Lord of the Rings I have gone and I've watched the Hobbit movies more because Russell really likes them. And I kind of had this thought about it, that I like the Hobbit movies. I don't think they're as good as the Lord of the Rings movies. However, I remember when I watched Battle of the Five Armies, 
I thought to myself, like, let's say I had never seen Lord, like right. Fellowship yeah, or whatever. That's true. Okay, these I would have seen. I would have seen The Hobbit and been like, oh my gosh, what is the next? Like, yeah. this is an awesome movie. What is Fellowship going to be like? You know, so I feel like the hard part was judging it from. Because they came. Because they came yeah. after. I honestly think that, like, on a scale, you know, on a scale of one to ten, as far as movies, we are judging it against Lord of the Rings, and we're not judging it for on its own merit. And I yeah. think because we were doing that, I mean, even though he kind of phoned it in, the production value is still good. Mm-hmm. The characters are great. The casting is amazing. The costumes are amazing. The acting is the awesome. The acting, you know, so it's like a lot of the check marks that we would check mark for like a Lord of the Rings or for, for a fantasy show are there. The score is good. All of that is good. But it's just because Lord of the Rings had really, he just did, you know, it's one of those, it was magic. Everything came together, the technology, the person, the writing, the act, the actors, all of that came together so perfectly at that moment that it it's so hard to judge anything against it. And and plus at a baseline level, yeah. just the story The Hobbit, in my humble opinion, is not as good as the story of The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, you're coming at it from kind of a lower bar anyway, mm-hmm. and then you are comparing it to... Cla- what we, what I feel, are classic movies that define yeah. our generation. Oh you know, yeah, those are those are movies that are like touchstone movies I agree. that we can all just sit down and have hours long conversations. About. Also, I think sure. that people are very protective of what they loved if they if they read the books first, sure. because I know for a fact our good friend Meds has like a disdain for some of the what was done in the movies. Okay, and. So I think that if you, I mean, I heard an author one time describe the relationship between her books and the movies that were made of her books as, okay, her book is the the grandmother mm-hmm. and the movie is like a great grandchild right. or, or a grandchild. So though it's related, it's not like the story. It's right. It's like a... A copy of a copy of a copy. Right, and that's the thing, and I think why you get a situation where I feel like Star Wars is different, and the prequels to Star Wars I I treat differently than people who might have, like, an affinity for the books, is that even in the the extended stuff when they were talking about, you know, the writing, because obviously you can't do page to page, page to film exact. You can't do that. That's just not how it goes. But they, you know, they would say, you know, there's some things we did different and blah, 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 but... The books are still there. They still exist. Nothing about the movie is ever going to change anything in the books. You can still enjoy them and read them, and, and the story's still there. The problem that happened with, with the prequels of Star Wars is that he fundamentally changed stuff or, or explained things we didn't want explained, and that changed what we knew. Whereas having a movie about Lord of the Rings doesn't change Lord of the Rings. Right, yeah. But it does change Star Wars. Prequels change Star Wars. Right. And that is the difference. And he's it does. Tink- he's tinkering with something we fell in love with, and then he's like, what? What's your problem? It's mine. Oh, yeah, it's my don't... art. Uh, you should love it because I touched it. I don't know what your guys' problem is. Yeah. I just want to release another version of my original trilogy. I've uh, included a little bit more CGI in the cantina scene that I was never really happy with. You know. I can't hear you, Rico. Uh, no, that was the intention. <laughs> that, I, I think he was doing that on purpose. Yes, sorry. <laughs> no, but I anyway, so I think George that's Lucas why. Impression. That's why. Where's we Chris when we need him? Yeah, <laughs> I know. we need Chris to throw a few uh, Does Chris impressions do a in good here. Impression? He does good impressions yeah. of just about everyone. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And save the bro. Save save the convention. Save the galaxy. Yes, he does. Lies. He does. Oh, it's oh, lies. It's all lies. He does that a pretty was my good impression Palpatine. of his impression. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's good. We're going to wrap up this installment of our con coverage, which sure. is really just a booth chat. <laughs> yeah, booth chat. Just booth chat. And we'll, like, go check out the con and... Yeah. Report regroup, back. Regroup. Report. Okay. All Stay right. tuned to these commercials from our <laughs> supporters. Supporters and sponsors. <laughs> and this is NPR.
you know, if you have anything that you want to add to our conversation, you can contact us at girlygeeks at gmail.com. That's girlygeeks with a Z at gmail.com. You can call our voicemail line at 432-363-4742. Comment on our Facebook page. You can reach us on Twitter or go directly to our website at anomalypodcast.com. That's A-N-O-M-A-L-Y podcast.com. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm Angela. And I'm Jen. And you've been listening to the Anomaly Podcast, where female and fandom converge. With Noah and Rico. And yes. (laughs) Well, we never really even did a proper intro. No, we didn't. (laughs) That's all right. Not do a good job. Hi. (laughs) We're out of our elements. Okay, I'm sorry. And don't forget to check out our good friend Rico Dosti's podcast, Treks and Sci-Fi. You can check him out at treksf.com, and his podcast is available pretty much everywhere. If you like the Anomaly podcast, please subscribe. The easiest way to do that is by using the Overcast podcast player or the Stitcher app. You can also find us on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube. We're everywhere. And of course, you can find all of that and more at anomalypodcast.com. That's A N O M A. LYpodcast.com. If you think you have a friend or two that might like our show, share it with them and spread the word. Thanks for listening.